The Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome to the divine service this evening. Uh, just a couple of announcements. One, tomorrow is our first day of Sunday school, and also today in the service, uh, we are going to be having the installation of teachers and and uh, the confirmation that will be happening tomorrow. But we will have the, pre the presenting of Bibles to the youth. Uh, so tonight that would be Zoe. Zoe is going to be given a Bible from the congregation uh, that we pray will be used in the continued Christian education of their life. Uh, also because it is a new uh, Wednesday school year, I'm going to start asking questions for the sermon. The three questions you have for the sermon today. Number one, how does Jesus know the leper had faith? How does Jesus know the leper had faith? Number two, what does the leper's outward worship tell us about his faith? What does the leper's outward worship tell us about his faith? And number three, what does it mean that the leper's faith has made him well? What does it mean that the leper's faith has made him well? Please turn your bulletins over. And below the weekly schedule, we will recite together the first commandment as well as the Bible passages beneath that. The first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 4-5. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have a lasting life. John 3, 16. Let us sing our opening hymn, O Holy Spirit, grant us grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help. 
help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
O Lord, keep your church with your perpetual mercy, and because of our frailty we cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us from all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, from God, now and forever. The Old Testament lesson is from Proverbs chapter 4. <coughs> Hear my son and accept my words that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction, do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it, do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong, they are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, be attentive, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. The epistles from Galatians chapter 5. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This is the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God.
Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord.
of God's word which we consider today, the Holy Spirit caused be recorded in Luke chapter 17. Let us pray. These are your words, Heavenly Father, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Your faith has made you well, Jesus says to the cleansed leper from Samaria. How did Jesus know that the man had faith? Faith is an activity of the heart. You cannot see faith. Only God can look at a man's heart. So, you would probably answer that Jesus is God. So he is able to look into the heart of the leper and see his faith. And yes, Jesus is certainly God. Yet Jesus did not need to be God to see the leper's faith. Anyone standing around with eyes and ears could clearly perceive that the man had deep faith. How could they perceive this man's faith if they could not look into his heart? Because the man cried out to Jesus for mercy. And when he saw that his leprosy was cleansed, he turned back to Jesus, glorifying God with a loud voice, and falling at his face, on his face, at Jesus' feet, he gave thanks to God. One would literally need to be blind and deaf to not know that this man had faith. Faith is invisible. Only God can see faith. And yet, this man's faith was clearly visible. How is this? Because faith produces fruit. We heard this from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and of course, this is not an exhaustive list of the fruit of the Spirit, which is the fruit of faith. We know the leper had faith in Jesus because his faith caused him to cry out to Jesus for help. He cried, have mercy, along with the other nine lepers. He used his voice to shout praises and thanksgiving to God. Faith starts in the heart, but it does not lie dormant. It works its way through to the mouth. This is why Jesus says, Whoever confesses me before men, I also will confess before my Father, who is in heaven. And, and why St. Paul writes, For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Public worship is evidence of saving faith. When Christians sing the Kyrie eleison, that is the Lord have mercy upon us, they, and when they confess the creed and sing hymns of praise and thanksgiving and come to bow before Jesus, they make visible the faith which dwells in their hearts, just as apples on an apple tree give proof that the tree is an apple tree. Yet strangely, it is common for those, or at least I've heard it quite often, but from those who say they are Christians and yet do not come to church, will pass judgment on those Christians who do regularly go to church. And they'll say things like, I don't want to go to church because Churches are filled with hypocrites. And as with many bad ideas, there is a little bit of truth in that. There are hypocrites who go to church. There are people who go to church not to receive God's grace through faith, not to worship Christ, but to make a show and to prove how good they are. 
and Scripture attests to this. Just last week, we heard the parable from Jesus of how the priest and the Levite, who devoted their lives to public worship, yet proved that they had no faith because they neglected to love their neighbor blind blood in the side of the world. And that goes to show that public worship is not the only fruit of faith, but also love, joy, peace, patience, and so forth. And also, public worship without faith is not pleasing to God. But the fruit of faith is not what saves, but the faith itself is what saves. Yet, fruits are bound to follow. This is what it says in our Lutheran Confessions, in the epitome of the formula of Concord. Good works certainly and without doubt follow true faith, if it is not a dead but a living faith. Just as fruit grows on a good tree. Matthew 7, 17. And if good works follow a living faith, then it follows that bad works follow unbelief. This is why St. Paul admonishes us, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. And he goes on. The works of the flesh are evident. Sexual morality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Works like these make evident a lack of faith. St. Paul even goes on to say, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is why our Lutheran Confessions also says, we also reject and condemn the teaching that faith and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit are not lost by willful sin, but that the saints can be allowed to retain the Holy Spirit even though they fall into adultery and other sins that persist in it. It's also the, form, the epitome of the formula of conquest. So those who persist in sins without repenting, willful, are not considered Christians. So while faith remains an activity of the heart, which ultimately only God can see, both unbelief and faith can be made evident by outward actions. This is why Christians should flee from what is evil and cling to what is good. Continuing in sinful behavior without repenting kills saving faith and gives evidence of unbelief. Continued practicing of the fruit of the Spirit including love, joy, and public worship, gives evidence of a lively faith and blocks the sinful flesh from accomplishing its evil desires. Now what did the leper's outward ex expression of faith demonstrate about the faith that dwells in his heart? Well, when he cried out for mercy, it showed that the leper trusted in Christ to heal him not based on the leper's own worthiness, but according to Christ's own compassion and goodness. Today we rarely look at a disease as a consequence of sin, yet that is, a very, that is very much the way people viewed leprosy at this time. Likely because the Old Testament frequently connects leprosy with punishment, very directly. Not just that people assume that someone had leprosy did a bad thing, but God punished people with leprosy. God punished Miriam, the sister of Moses, with leprosy for seven days because she rebelled against Moses. God punished King Uzziah with leprosy on his face because he offered incense in the temple when he was not authorized. 
And clearly, the leprosy of these ten lepers is a symbol of their spiritual uncleanness. Yet the lepers do not consider their unworthiness. They trust in Jesus to heal them. This shout for mercy demonstrated faith in their hearts. While the other nine lepers did not return to Jesus, the Samaritan did, with shouts of praise to God and thanksgiving as he bowed down at Jesus' feet. This outward action demonstrated that the leper, the Samaritan, considered Jesus to be his God and Savior. Jesus sent the lepers to the temple to show themselves to the priests. The priests would have then performed a ceremony for the lepers and uh, for their, to show that they were ceremonially clean. And then also would have offered a sin offering to make atonement for their sins. The, le the temple is where God dwelt, and the temple is where God made atonement for sins. Yet the lepers did not go to the temple. He gave glory to God at his feet. At God's feet. At Jesus' feet. He demonstrated with his outward actions that he believed in his heart that Jesus is God. His body being the temple where God dwells. He demonstrated with his worship that he believed that Jesus would make atonement for his sins because he is the fulfillment of all the ceremonies in the temple. By the lepers' outward actions, we see clearly what his faith held in his heart. And this is what we do when we come to worship. We confess our sins before a God we do not see. We do not claim to be worthy, but to be poor, miserable sinners who deserve temporal and eternal punishment. But we pray to God to have mercy and forgive us for the sake of the blood of His Son. We sing, Lord have mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us. Because we believe that we receive all good things of body and soul from the only God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And out of His love for us and not on account of our worthiness. We confess the creed confessed by the whole Christian church throughout history, which confesses that the Son of God, for our sake and for our salvation, came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and made man so that he could suffer and die for our sins. We stand for the reading of the Gospel, as we would for our monarch when he speaks to us. We kneel before bread and wine, believing that this is the body and blood of our Lord, which was given and shed for us for the forgiveness of his sins. We say clearly, Amen, to every prayer and blessing, because we do, because we believe it to be true. We sing with joy, supplications, praise and thanksgiving to our God. All these things we do with our bodies, our ears, our eyes, and mouth, because that is what is going on in our hearts. Our faith becomes visible and audible when we worship Him in spirit and truth. Your faith has made you well, Jesus says, what does Jesus mean by made you well? Well, in fact, Jesus said your faith has saved you. Bible translators translate the word for save as made well, because it can mean made well, kind of like it can in English, where you say the doctor saved me. You, you don't actually believe the doctor gave you eternal salvation. And in the context here, the leper was healed of his leprosy. Yet all ten of the lepers were made well, and only one returned to give thanks at Jesus' feet. To only one did Jesus say, your faith has saved you. 
after showing disapproval that the other nine did not return to demonstrate such faith. The nine other disciples went to the temple where the priest would offer a sacrifice to make atonement for them. The one Samaritan leper returned to Jesus, who would make atonement for his sins on the cross. The leper's faith did not simply heal him. His faith saved him. That is, his faith gave him eternal salvation, or eternal life. How did the leper's faith give him eternal life? Because faith receives what God promises us through Jesus. Forgiveness of sins, peace with God, and acceptance from Him, and eternal life. Faith is not our work, faith receives. This is why faith must be an activity of the heart. It is by grace, not by our works. And yet faith receives something that is outside of us. The promise of salvation through Jesus. This is why faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. We come to church to worship Christ because we have faith. Our faith receives God's blessing and forgiveness, and our faith cannot help break forth, break through from our heart and into our words and actions. We do not come to church to make a show of our faith or to earn our salvation, yet our public worship does publicly declare the truth we hold in our Savior, in our hearts. Our cries of supplication our confession and singing of glory. All these come from a heart that trusts in the Lord. We come to church to hear our Savior say to us each week, Your faith has saved you. And by hearing this, our faith in our Savior grows. Amen. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat> The peace of God which surpasses all understanding of God's and mind in Christ Jesus.
Let's pray for the whole church of God and place Jesus and all people according to their needs. Everlasting and merciful God, we beseech you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to look in mercy upon your church, protect and sanctify her by your truth. May your word be taught in its truth and purity, and may your sacraments be rightly administered. Grant unto your church faithful pastors who shall declare your truth with power and shall live according to your will. Send forth laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith into all unbelievers. We pray for missionaries, especially David Price in the Dominican Republic and Michael Paul in Taiwan. Give them faithful hearts and ready lips to confess the truth and comfort the poor in spirit. In mercy, remember the enemies of your church and grant them repentance unto life. And in your mercy, your prayer, that your protecting hand be over our country and the world we travel, prosper what is good among us, and bring to naught and evil, comfort and purpose. Protect and bless your servants, the President of the United States, the Governor of Iowa, our legislators, judges, magistrates, and all in Florida. The armed forces and public servants of our country. Fit them for their high calling. Calling by the gift of your spirit of wisdom and fear. So that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your promise, O God, be the defender of the widow and the father of the orphan. Relieve the sick and the covering and those in need, especially our brothers and sisters. Marilyn Walters, Caitlin Clark, Natalie Lowen, Lloyd Eskew, Don Bailey, Bob and Barbara Francis, Carly Gibbons, Bob Saylor, Kathy Jones, Janice Manning, Alice Penniston, Wendy Steiner, Lynn Blackwell, Angie Scott, Christy Risen, Ray Jones, Ruth Knur, Steve Rasmussen, Heidi Parker, Paul Rabbis, Patty Carter, Martin Webster, Cheryl Lundgren, Susan Braga, Lily Marching, Diane Leslie, Amy Quirk, Evan Buddy, and the family, the families of Cornelia Rabbis and uh, Shepherd. Bring comfort and the sure hope of the resurrection of the, of the dead to them. Graciously help those who are assaulted by the devil and are in the hell of death. We strengthen those who suffer for the sake of Christ's holy name. Grant that we may live together in peace and prosperity. Bestow upon us good and seasonable weather. And bless us with upright Christian counsel and all that we have to take. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We especially commend to your gracious care and keeping this your congregation, which you have bought with a great price, with the precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Keep from us all offenses and bind us together in the unity of your holy love. Grant that the little ones who are baptized in your name may be brought up in your fear, that your table give to those who there commune with you peace and life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Be merciful, O God, to all according to your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when our final hour shall come, grant us a blessed departure from this world, and on the last day of resurrection to your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Eso es ser. God bless you, Jolene, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, Quinn, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. God bless you, Zoe, and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins.
Gracious unto you, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give.